Okay. Now, uh, today I'll be sharing with you about uh, quantum extension. Okay. Now, uh, actually, what I'm going to uh, tell you also is a summary of what has been happening with regard to quantum extension. Um, um, okay. We have been conducting uh, guided meditations and also talks on quantum extension for quite a while already. It's almost um, it's, it's over a month. Yeah? Um, uh, we expound on, uh, on being aware of where we are. Uh, of course, there are people who, who uh, want to know about the third dimension, the fourth dimension, fifth dimension. They want to know about it, which is very much uh, uh, encouraged. So we actually had a lot of sessions on how to come out of the third dimension and to come uh, to rise higher than the fourth dimension, yeah, the fourth dimension, and to rise higher into the fifth dimension. So there have been a, a series of uh, um, discussions, guidance, meditations, uh, and, and homeworks through all of this. Yeah, so it's already been one month. Okay, uh, if I can give you a quick summary, uh, because this is important. Yeah, this summary, this recap is important so that we know exactly where we are. We become very conscious. We become conscious of uh, what state we are in. Okay. All right, so the series of exercises, one of the first is about uh, no complaint. Sounds very simple, but as we do the exercise, it's quite a challenge. That means you have no complaint at all, zero complaint throughout the day, 24 hours. So what happens is, after a while, you start seeing, oh, we have quite a bit of things to complain about every time. You know? So we start discovering about ourselves, and we start become con conscientious, we become conscious of our our little noise inside our head that, you know, bugs us to complain. We start looking at it and discovering that, ah, oh, there's this guy there that, uh, you know, makes us complain. <laughs> okay. So we become conscientious of it and it was shut down, it was toned down. And after a while, we start seeing, uh, we were guided to see the good that has happened in our lives. Yeah. So there is a lot of good, um, many discovered. We start seeing a lot of goodness in their lives and blessings from above and you know, we, there is abundance and there is lots of love coming through, right? Okay, so from there, appreciation comes. You have this sudden, overpouring of uh, appreciation that we have this and also there is this uh, seeking of forgiveness that you have overlooked all this it has been there all the while and we never saw it and you know we need we, we, we seek for forgiveness that you know we, we disregarded all this part of ourselves and you know, so there's this overwhelming uh, energy of uh, forgiveness and unconditional love. And so that one really brings us to the fourth dimension, which a lot of uh, people who are following this program were going through in a very beautiful way and their heart opens up and they are able to love unconditionally. Yeah, so that's really amazing that this has happened in such a large scale at this time in a collective manner. And then we go to the fifth dimension where we start realizing there are many um, other beings around. There are, of course, our deities, our God, 
our angels, our ancestors, our sages and gurus, they are, they are in the space, in our space, in, is in the etheric space, or you can, is in the fifth dimension. You are in the fifth dimension where you are surrounded by all these uh, divine beings. And you maybe become more conscious of them, their presence, and also you might even start seeing them, which is uh, quite normal. Because the next stage is going to be the sixth dimension. Sixth dimension is where you can see. You can see these uh, divine beings. Okay? Of course, you need to cultivate in a way, practice. You need to practice focusing on a divine being, one divine being, your master, your guru on the that I. So this is important because you want to have your guru as the goal for your seventh dimension. <laughs> okay. So your guru is always the perfect one to, to be focused upon on your third dimension. Uh, it's always the perfect one because you know he is the one who will bring us. Right? You need the guru. Look at that picture at the back. Well, picture looks good and safe because the earth is right there. Just imagine the earth is not in the picture. Okay, it looks nice with all the stars. But you can get lost in that space. It's vast, it's huge, it's lots of. That's a lot of galaxies out there. Yeah. So without a guru, uh, it's better not to venture into this because you know this is big, this is huge. Okay, so it's always good to have your guru placed here and focus upon your guru, and let your guru be the guide through your extension, and uh, the guru being always graceful, always willing to teach. That's why he's called a guru. Guru is the one who loves to share their knowledge, of course, in their own way, okay? They have their own style of doing things. We can't say, you know, my guru never tell me anything, you know? So there is a time for everything guru knows best, okay? The guru knows how to approach you in the right time and right way, okay? So uh, when you have a guru as your goal, the guru will always be there. He will manifest. He can manifest inside you. He can manifest outside you. He can manifest in the skies, in the animals, in elements. He can manifest any way he wants. Now the quantum extension group is at this stage. So I've given you pretty much the summary of the quantum extension group. Those of you who like to join the quantum extension WhatsApp group is available and the links are quite in, in quite a few places. So you can ask for it and it will be there. Okay, quantum extension. Okay, even in my Facebook, you will see uh, there are updates on quantum extension. Now, why is it called quantum extension? Quantum extension is the right name because it's a quantum leap in consciousness. It's a huge leap in consciousness. It's not a third dimension to fourth dimension and you can stay there for another hundred years, you know. No. This is straight third dimension, bail out into the fifth dimension, and those who can't uh, stay, don't know how to stay in the fifth dimension, uh, chances of slipping down to the fourth and back to the third is very high. Okay. Now, just for those who are afraid, 
of slipping back into the third dimension. Here is my advice. Okay, here is my advice. sharing with you what I feel that you can do. Do not slip into the fourth, into the third dimension. Okay? When you are, when your vibration is coming down, there's a pull from the third dimension, and you are being dragged into the third dimension. At that time, you do this. I forgive all who has done whatever to me. For they do not know what they are doing. I seek for forgiveness for those whom I have wronged. For I did not know what I was doing. I forgive myself for all that I have wronged. And I seek for God's forgiveness. Say all of this from your heart. If you say all of this from your heart, the fourth dimension is there. The fourth dimension is actually unconditional love, forgiveness, compassion, mercy. That's the fourth dimension. That's your fourth dimension. Okay. So if we are able to feel this love coming out from your heart, our hearts, we are staying at the fourth dimension at least. Otherwise, down third dimension. I hope this helps you here in times of need. Of course, we are not using it as a tool where you can, you know, gain something and you just want to stay up because, you know, I feel like I want to uh, try out this system and see if it works. You can't do it. You have to give it your all. Body, mind and soul, you have to do it. You have to do it in such a way that it's all of you, just like Christ. He sacrificed himself and became the sacrificial fire itself. Yeah. So this is calling for a complete transformation. It's not calling for a mind job where you can, you know this, what to do and you know, I can go up and come down any way I want. There's no eye here. Your eye is dissolving into the collective eye or the cosmic eye or the God eye. You are, you are merging into this. So there's no longer uh, and it's all of a sudden third party here, you know, trying to to manage this whole system from the mind. You know, there's no such possibility because your resonance is not there if you do that. But if you give yourself completely and become forgiveness itself. Okay, let's talk about forgiveness. You know, um, I used to think that I'm a type of person who, I mean, yes, I, I, I still believe that I can forgive so easily anybody. You know? So, and I don't think anything about it because anyone who has wronged me, I don't really uh, bother at all, really. So I, I just move on in life and, and I continue to strive over whatever that's meaningful for me and to go all out if it's truly benefiting others, I would also put all my effort to help and share as much as I can, right? 
But this forgiveness is only, yeah, it's not that simple. To be able to forgive is one thing. To be able to ask for forgiveness is another thing. This is the part which I think I am born on earth to learn. Because, you know, from to be able to give forgiveness, I don't know, maybe it was from a point of view of uh, some ego that maybe it's more part of ego thinking I'm still forgiven, it's okay, I just want to move on, I want to go on. But to ask for forgiveness from your heart, with someone whom you have all the mind to think that they are wrong, it's something else. It's really, you need to really be humble and you need to really bow down and seek for forgiveness. And that's a, that's a process which I think, you know, I feel that is a complete manifestation of forgiveness because you you really um, become forgiveness itself so it's a beautiful process of course it's not easy it's painful but i believe all of us can achieve it all of us can because we have been given the strength now we ask we are not pushing our way up we are actually being bailed out and looking down from the fifth dimension and you realize that you need to forgive. You need to forgive and you need to ask for forgiveness. So when you can see it very clearly that you need to do this, you are already in the fifth dimension. There's no, there's no uh, pressure for you to seek and find the answer of what to to come out of the third dimension at all. There's no need already uh, energetically in the plane where you can uh, look forward to the higher dimensions. Yeah? The higher dimensions are there. It's manifesting. Look at the picture again at the back of you. You see the earth, you see stars. You see the planet. You know what I see? In the sixth dimension, I will show you what it is. All these stars have civilizations inside. Some are quite conscious of us. Some are not so conscious, they are more involved, they are more into their own world, they are more looking at their own issues, but there are some stars, the one right here, super conscious. I mean, this is not the exact picture, yeah. but if you want the picture of the actual stars who are conscious of us and who is playing a part in our planet right now to in this grand transition, I can show you some of it. Okay. So, but anyways, it looks like a normal star, so you won't be able, it's just the color, the color difference and the radiance is different. So, so from the radiance and color, you can actually identify which planet it is and what they are doing now, what messages they are sending over, and how they are playing a part in this, this whole galaxy and this whole transition of the Earth, right? So there are countless consciousness outside there. And they are all just like you and me. They are conscious beings. You can communicate with them, you can exchange energy if you like, you can even exchange things if you like. In their space, energy is more important, not material. 
material is a manifestation as a reflection of certain energy consistently being there for a long time, it manifests as material. But um, energy is more real for them because they deal with it every day. Yeah. So this is uh, quantum extension where we are our consciousness is rising. Uh, we are becoming more and more aware of the cosmic phenomena that all of us are in right now. We are living in a planet floating in the middle of a vast galactical system with beautiful planets surrounding and we've got the amazing beautiful sun where we constantly see every day and we need to awake that we are the cosmos. <laughs> All of us are the cosmos. We are the universe. We are in the universe. We are very much part of the universe and we are progressing with the universe in a grand way, right? We just need to wake up to this phenomena more and more. That's all we need to do. That's our job now, to wake up to this grand phenomena happening now, okay? Just to make it not so monotonous i'll just sing one version this song kind of very appropriate with the topic that we have just spoken about quantum extension and the cosmic space and consciousness which is everywhere and this song is directly addressing that great being who created this universe. Uh, I'm not a great singer, and I, but I know the meaning of these words, which is more important for me than the tune. I know my tune is running all over the place, but just bear with me. Listen to the words. We should Sing 
दीन जनों के जीवन सहार जनों के जीवन सहार दया तुझे कृपा के रो to really look into this consciousness which is everywhere which is you which is the earth which is the stars which is the galaxies this consciousness this is in the trees in your child in your friends this same consciousness if you are to really see it you have seen the ultimate goal of all religions to recognize this divine pure consciousness in everything and everyone and if all of us can stay in this awareness constantly You are that pure consciousness. You have become one. There's no more mind. There's no more illusions. There's no illusions anymore. You have awakened to your true identity, which is pure consciousness, which is ever, was ever present since the beginning of time even end of time, forever and ever. I thank Bhagawan Sri Sathya Sai Baba for showing me this, because this is all I ever wanted from day one, from the first time I met him, even I was very young, this yearning has been there. And he, with his all compassionate mercy and grace, have somehow kept this nuisance fellow <laughs> who has been bugging him about Brahmananda, Atma Tattva, realization of the self since very young. Yeah, so, this, I feel that this is the least I can do is to share with as many people as possible what Bhagavan has taught me and shown With this, thank you very much for giving me opportunity here to speak. And if there is, and we are exactly the time for UAE station right now. So if there's any questions, we can always have it for another time right now. And I'll pass the station to Brother Randa, are you there? Yeah, thank you so much. I remember to get such an uplifting talk. And, uh, it's a bit muffled. You know? 
can you maybe take out your earphones? Much better, thank you. It was an uplifting talk, uh, Julius. Thank you so much for sharing. And, uh, you know, it's such a selfless act that you share even the minutest thing, whether people, certain things people may not understand, you know, when you talk of uh, the gamma, the beta, the theta waves, but still you, you share, hoping that, you know, that, uh, that knowledge is planted in them and one day when the awakening happens they will, they will connect you know that day brother Julius told about the gamma waves uh, okay maybe this is what it is this is what super consciousness says yeah thank you so much you know so blessed uh, Julius to be in this forum and uh, you know so grateful to Swami for having chosen you as a divine instrument for guiding us all yeah bless you and love you so much uh, Loving you so much. Thank you, thank you. Loving you too. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah.